Hey monsters, thanks for tuning in to Murder Murder News, the true crime cult for the latest breaking news, murdery memes, TV reviews, podcast recommendations, and all things spooky. Look, we really want to start a cult where we sit around and watch true crime documentaries, and if you want to join, you can have your own baby goat. I'm television's Aurora Katie. And I'm Angelina. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and this is the Week in True Crime. Murder, murder. This week, activist Toyan Salau was found murdered after she was reported missing from Tallahassee, Florida on June 6th. Toyan tweeted a plea for help on June 6th after being sexually assaulted by a man who offered her a place to stay after a protest in Tallahassee. Toyan detailed the assault on her Twitter, alleging that the man had touched her and that she had left his house and called the police. It is not yet known whether the police took any action against the man who assaulted her or responded to the call. After her tweet, a search began for Toyan around Tallahassee and her friends were unable to get a hold of her. She was then spotted days later on June 10th on security footage at Big Easy Snowballs. She was not seen again until her body was discovered on June 13th, along with the body of 75-year-old Victoria Sims, a local politician, near the home of Aaron Lee Glee. Aaron has since been arrested and charged with murder and kidnapping, and he does not appear to match the description of the man who assaulted Toyan on June 6th. It's not clear whether Toyan knew Victoria Sims or what happened in the time between her tweet on June 6th and the time police found her body on June 13th. We are so heartbroken to hear about Toyin's death and have been following her disappearance since she tweeted about her distress on the 6th. Toyin will be remembered for her activism and dedication to the Black Lives Matter campaign. We would like to give a special thanks to Gigi from Noir True Crime Files for her research and piecing together the timeline of Toyin's disappearance and murder. Keep an eye out for her upcoming appearance on our show. In the past week, Two black transgender women have been murdered in the U.S. 25-year-old Raya Milton was killed last week during a car robbery in Cincinnati, Ohio. Raya was lured to Liberty Township by a teenage girl and two men to steal her car. They then shot her multiple times. Police have arrested Caleb Marshall Tucson and the unnamed 14-year-old for Raya's murder, but are still looking for the third suspect, Tyree Jeffrey Cross. When asked if Raya's murder was a hate crime, Sheriff Richard Jones said it was not, while also misgendering Raya and referring to her by her dead name. In a separate incident, 27-year-old Dominique Remy Fells was murdered in Philadelphia and was found near the Schuylkill River. Remy had been stabbed repeatedly and had trauma to her head and face. A Kenneton Jones, an acquaintance of Remy, has since been arrested for her brutal murder. Last weekend, thousands of people gathered to mourn the lives of black trans people who have been victims of hate crimes across the nation. Several marches for black trans lives gathered, many of these events syncing up with what should have been Pride Weekend in various cities. Both Raya and Remy have GoFundMe set up by friends and family to help cover the funeral expenses, and we have included those links down below. It's especially important that we remember both of these women this month during Pride, so please help share their names and their memories. Their lives matter. This week, we're watching Brittany Murphy, an ID mystery. The new ID documentary takes a look at the mysterious death of Brittany Murphy in 2009. Brittany Murphy was pretty much the queen of the 90s and early 2000s, starring in roles like Clueless, Girl Interrupted, and 8 Mile. The whole world was shocked to find out that the 31-year-old star had died in her home and that her new husband died under similar circumstances five months later. The coroner claimed that she essentially died of pneumonia combined with heavy period leading to anemia combined with some cough medication. We want to hear your theories on Brittany's death because this really is a mystery. Each week, we'll try to introduce you to a podcast that might be new for you. This week's favorite podcast is Nightmerica. Let's take a look. We are so excited to have Britt and Aaron with us from this week's favorite podcast, Nightmerica. Nightmerica takes you on a tour of the abnormal, paranormal, weirdly true, and truly weird in every corner of the nation. Aaron and Britt, thank you so much for joining us. How are you both doing today? Good. Thank you for having us. Yeah, I'm doing great. Thanks so much for inviting us. How did you two meet and what inspired you to start your podcast? And we'll start with you, Britt. 
Um, so Aaron and I met through the Hinge dating app. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We uh, dated a little bit last year, um, both realizing how much we love weird all things weird, true crime, paranormal. Uh, kind of from there, realized we are much better off as friends. Um, and then Aaron suggested starting the podcast. And of course, I had to jump on board. Yeah, and it, if I can add to that, the I've, I've worked within the paranormal world for a long time. And I'm also a true crime fan. But I would certainly say my natural skill set is more in the paranormal Brit tends to be able to list true crime cases a little bit more easily, even though there is a lot of crossover between the paranormal and true crime. You, you tend to get striking cases of, of the unexplained and paranormal that originated with true crime cases. But there's also something within the paranormal that it's dominated by guys that look like me, white guys, and and it was, I thought, important to bring in different voices and even a millennial voice and uh, a woman's voice, which there are some, but not that many out there within this field. Yeah, definitely not so much in paranormal. I would say more so in true, cr uh, in true yeah. crime, but yes. um, in paranormal, which I've been interested in for so long, it really is mostly men. <laughs> there's there's certainly some exceptions amy bruni is on this show kindred spirits and there have been a lot of notable investigators throughout the years but what's kind of fascinating not to go too much down that paranormal rabbit hole but a lot of the spiritualist movement that emerged in the late 1800s and then through the early 1900s that was led by a lot of women and they were part of the suffragette movement they were they were activists they were notable women and the whole movement itself was largely the the ground zero kind of event was with the fox sisters in upstate new york who launched this whole spiritualist thing so i feel like we're kind of getting back to that hopefully and hopefully we're getting more female voices and more diversity of voices out there but mm -hmm. Yeah, in TV, it hasn't been as much of a case in the last few years. That's great. And what got you into this, whether it be paranormal or true crime? What is your spooky origin? And we'll start with you again, Brett. For me, what kind of got me started is I grew up in a very like anxiety riddled family where the bad man was always kind of hiding behind a tree watching you. Um, so I grew up kind of thinking what is out there, um, what lurks in the dark. And really in middle school, I would go to the library and check out books on the mafia, you know, like all seventh grade girls do. Um, and just really was fascinated with that whole crime element. Um, and from there, you know, the podcast boom of serial and criminal and all of that kind of brought to light that it was kind of more socially acceptable to be into true crime. And now we're so lucky having all these documentaries and things like that to kind of feed our, our addiction. But no, I've always kind of been interested in the psychology of true crime. Great. And how about for you, Aaron? Well, when I was a kid, I was into, I, I was and remain a nerd. I was into comic books, spooky stories, science fiction, Twilight Zone. And, and I think you can relate to this unsolved mysteries or even things like In Search Of with Leonard Nimoy. The, all these stories that kind of combined the weird, the weird crimes along with sort of these paranormal tales. And I think on top of that was the fact that for me, I grew up in Florida and there were some pretty notably gruesome cases that took place when I was a, uh, a young boy that some of it was built up to be almost a boogeyman that my parents would warn me about, about not going off, running off on my own in a mall or, or in a grocery store because someone might kidnap you. And then mm -hmm. the other one was the specter of essentially Ted Bundy, who, while I was not necessarily his preferred victim <laughs> it was something that I knew about at a at a young age and from there my my career was I became a journalist I worked for newspapers I worked in newsrooms I was listening to the police scanner I 
heard of a lot of crimes. I, I was on the scene of crimes. And weirdly, that kind of eventually evolved into me doing paranormal TV and talking about the paranormal as a job. So I still work as a journalist, but now I do a lot of hosting and working on these, these TV shows talking about violence and about the spooks. That is so cool. I, I can't wait to check out your shows. I haven't seen them yet. We'll definitely have you plug them at the end, but they sound fascinating. They're fun. I can send you some unfortunate stills I've taken of him in the middle of a word or something on them. <laughs> uh, please do because we'll post them yes. <laughs> so everybody can see them. <laughs> Um, so I love that there, like you both mentioned, that there is some crossover between cases and true crime and paranormal situations. Um, you've covered a lot of these great scenarios on your show. Do you have a favorite case or haunting or paranormal situation that you've covered on your show? How about for you, Brett? Uh, for me, it's definitely Elisa Lamb, that kind of unsolved aspect of her who did it. Um, but also the footage of her in the elevator where she's hitting the buttons and she's doing those weird hand motions. Could that be something paranormal? Is she playing that elevator game? Um, there's a lot of unknown kind of aspects with that. So for me, that's kind of the story that keeps me up at night and I think is a great connector between the two. It's such a good one. And I knew some about the case from previous podcasts and such I had listened to. Um, but I actually just recently found out about the elevator game and about like potentially like there's ghosts that could be at the hotel. Mm -hmm. um, Richard Ramirez had stayed yes. there and all these famous people had stayed at the hotel. Um, and I'm kind of on team elevator game at this point in time. It's How a pretty you know? interesting theory. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm into it. I mean, with, yeah. that, with that case in particular, I think there's a lot of potential layers to it. And I think you find that with some of these, these complex cases that while there very well could be a true crime ending, there could also be these paranormal elements. And, and within the paranormal itself, it's not, I find that it's not typically just necessarily one ghost or one paranormal element. Things create layers and then they build on top of one another. So you have just a, a bevy of, of potentially unexplained happenings. I definitely feel like there are places like that. And I think that, um, I can't remember the name of the hotel in LA where that happened. Cecil. Cecil, thank you. Um, but I feel like there are places like that where there's mm -hmm. trapped energy, where they just sort of create all this negativity or all these strange circumstances too. Yeah. And I, I would not. say that that's something <laughs> that, that I think is really Obviously, I'm biased, but I think something we do really well on Nightmarica is the fact that, so it's not just about ghosts and murders, we also tackle urban legends and mm -hmm. cryptozoology and aliens and Ooh. all Sasquatch. manner. Sasquatch, we love Sasquatch. Sasquatch. Yeah, you know, all manner <laughs> of, of weird happenings. And the way we kind of approach it is we each kind of come to the show knowing a general topic. So instead of just saying we're going to talk about hotels or we're just going to talk about New Orleans or whatever, we kind of try to hone in on a type of location and then each find a story within that, that you know, let's say ships. We're going to say ships and then maybe I'll come to it with a ghost story and Britt will come to it with a true crime story. And that allows us to cover a lot of grounds while also being very focused. But then we get to be sort of journalists and investigators telling the story, having fun, but also asking questions and thinking about things that you or I might wonder, but also things that the police or detectives and other investigators should be thinking about. So it could be an alien or it could be a jilted lover. Who knows? And Aaron, do you have a favorite um, case or paranormal subject you've covered on the show? Covered on the show? Well, I don't know that I have one offhand because I love them all. It's like picking my weird children. I don't know which one <laughs> I love the most. I, I will say it's sort of like the one that's the freshest in my mind is typically my favorite because we've just gone through the storytelling process. So we actually talk about carnivals in this latest episode and we talk about Amer the greatest hoax in American history. And then we also talk about a corpse that was on display 
and presented as a carnival sideshow. And those are kind of exhilarating cases because they capture the imagination of the country. And even if they're not necessarily paranormal, they are very weird. They're very odd and very abnormal. Right. Well, it's been so much fun having both of you. Can you tell our viewers where they can find you on social media? And that includes also, Erin, uh, your TV shows as well, because I really want to check those out. Yeah, I can speak for Nightmerica. Um, so you can find us on Nightmerica Podcast on Instagram, um, as well as Facebook. And then we're Nightmerica Show on Twitter, although I'm terrible at Twitter. So <laughs> follow us on Instagram. And then we're on every single podcast platform. Perfect. And I would say not only find us, but tell your friends about us, even yes. your enemies. Tell, tell people about <laughs> it, you know, gently the force ghosts. this podcast on them. And, and in addition to that, like I, you can also say hi to me at Aaron Sagers across the board and at Nightmerica uh, across the board. And I currently appear on the Travel Channel show Paranormal Caught on Camera, which airs Sundays at 9 p.m. Eastern time. And I also run the website paranormalpopculture.com. But yeah, but really, uh, we, we are a young podcast. We're having a lot of fun and mm -hmm. we want to hear from the folks that are listening to us and also hear their recommendations for stories and something we've thrown out there. Haven't had a lot of bites yet. I don't know. Maybe people are afraid of what we'll say, but if you have some sort of desire for paranormal advice, you can reach out to us and we will, we will offer our somewhat expertise for entertainment purposes only, I have to say. But, I love that. Uh, get the show. <laughs> That's great. Well, don't forget to subscribe to Nightmerica Podcast wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss a single episode. Thank you both so much for joining us. And Thanks, thank Aurora. This week on MurderMurder.News, Emily L. M. of Coffee and Washi Tape reviewed the book If You Tell by Greg Olson. If You Tell is the true story of sisters Nikki, Sammy, and Tori Notek, who survived the unimaginable abuse and torture by their mother Shelley Notek. Emily gives her thoughts on this book, which has been all the buzz of the true crime community. Have you read If You Tell yet? If so, let us know your thoughts on the book in the comments below. We love reading your comments, so long as you aren't an incel troll. And we wanted to give a shout out to Dame Untamed for mentioning that she doesn't understand how in the year 2020, a woman can be shot eight times in her bed with no charges being laid against the officers responsible. We also want to thank Hey It's Jen for saying she is hoping for justice for Breonna Taylor. She also really wants to watch the documentary 13th as well and we highly recommend. Thanks so much for tuning into This Week in True Crime with Murder Murder News. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button below, give us a thumbs up and tell all of your true crime friends. If you need more true crime in your life, join our commune at murdermurder.news for our monster book club and cold case solving groups. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. See you next week. Murder, murder.